सो हे गाइस वेलकम टू टॉक विद टाइसन एंड व्हाट आर वी गोइंग टू अकम्पलिश ऑन दिस चैनल वेल वीव गॉट बिफोर अर्स टुडे मैथ्यू आल मेरा इज कम फ्रॉम वेरी फार ऑल द वे टू वास्को बट एनी वेज या दिसांनी बरं फेमस झाला तो कवरिंग वेरी हॉट टॉपिक्स सम थिंग्स दॅट हॅव नॉट बीन एड्रेस्ड यु नो इट्स इट्स वेरी इझी टू मेक स्टेटमेंट्स बट या वी नीड समटाइम्स टू गो आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स थिंक अ लिटल डीप फॉर आर सेल्स वी आर ऑल एड्युकेटेड राईट दिस इज एन एनलाइटन जनरेशन टुडे अँड Matthew has taken quite some keen interest and he has always been showing good interest especially when it comes to our own history of Goa and so <clears throat> let's let's go for the hot topics right shall we so why did you take in like you know such keen interest in this topic especially like you know this going so side that Mr Velinkar has himself also taken some quite some keen interest see what has happened with subhash velinkar no he is using something called the goa inquisition okay okay and i am quite sure not many of us know what is goa inquisition but yeah. i'll tell you yeah. people outside goa and the rest of the country mm-hmm. they all know what is goa inquisition okay yeah. and you'll be surprised so uh, what happened is in the year 2018 uh, i just i was on my shop where i was working and i just was glancing through some videos and i came across this video by a lady called shefali vaidya mm-hmm. and she said goa inquisition the brutal acts of the christian missionaries oh my mm-hmm. god and since i am a christian you feel like you know offended of course, of course. and uh, since we know like you know in a when we were doing schooling and education and all that something about inquisition was mentioned and father victor ferro is the one with whom i heard for the first time the mm-hmm. word inquisition in those days and yes like many of the sins which the catholic church has committed in the past this was something could be in the dark ages that happened and we said okay let it be the church did it in the past Very now good. the things are not like that mm-hmm. so i happened to click on that mm-hmm. let me see i said what it is and and she said you know many years back when the portuguese were in goa and they brutally killed hindus and forcefully converted them and this and that I felt very bad now what to say what to say to this lady so I just like you know left that man again then I saw another video uh, where it is said St Francis Xavier brought the inquisition in Goa and like you know all of us I think who have watched western movies and uh, like mm-hmm. you know have keen interest in reading these novels about the middle ages history mm-hmm. uh, we know about something called the Spanish inquisition yeah and we know like something called burning at stake and this and that and she used those images there Okay. So I was like shocked. I'm like, what he did it? And like yeah. St. Francis Xavier for us, like, you know, he's such an honored saint in Goa. Mm-hmm. Like everybody honors him, Hindus, Christians, everybody. Mm-hmm. So I watched that video and she was like, you know, putting forth her points. And I'm like, I'm totally ignorant about this topic. So yeah, yeah. only thing that we could say is, oh, yes, the church did something wrong. And now the church yeah. is like, you know, not doing it. Then again another video came from her side saying that it is still happening. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it is not happening. We are not killing people for not converting. Exactly. Right. Okay, and we are not uh, burning anybody at stake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you and I know what sins we commit. Know, no priest has <laughs> scourged us to death. So mm-hmm. like uh, then I said something hit me and you know as St Francis Xavier is dear to all Goans, he is mm-hmm. dear to me as well and I am of course his devotee. So I said let me do something let me read something little about what mm-hmm. happened then i went to read something little i ended up doing a research which took me around 10 or 11 months okay so one topic led to another this book that book this that this that and i really wanted to go to the roots to find out where it all started mm-hmm. and i was in touch with father victor ferrao he told me you know this documentary was there and maybe he gave me some bits and here and there and one book i came across which shefali vaidya uses which uh, subhash velinkar is referring to and the only book probably uh, that spoke about the goa inquisition so largely and that is by anand kagba priyolkar okay okay i think that was published somewhere in 1947 or something in pune 
एंड वेरी एंटी चर्च बुक वेरी एंटी कैथलिक चर्च बुक बट यू कैन नॉट रिफ्यूट सेइंग दैट इट इज अ वेल रिसर्चड बुक यू नो ही हैज डन वेरी गुड रिसर्च बट ऑल फॉर द सेक ऑफ नॉनसेंस ओके ऑल फॉर द सेक ऑफ स्प्रेडिंग हेट्रेड सो एंड लाइक यू नो वेन आई रियलाइज अरे what is told to us like you know church was so bad in the past the church wasn't that bad mm-hmm. i realized that and the way they are uh, putting in front of us like you know people were burnt and killed and murdered for exactly. if they were not becoming christians actually nothing like that happened mm-hmm. and like you know when you read the accounts of the travelers of that time i got fascinated with that i said let me go deeper and deeper okay because you know this uh, whatever is going around in the country against christians mm-hmm. yes of course against other minorities as well but especially against christians because you and i are a christian here yeah. so i said this is nonsense totally built up on nonsense okay so it started in 2018 and because i wrote a research paper on that i used to call it article article but then i realized recently article is just some two or three pages matthew you wrote 58 pages don't call it article <laughs> it's a, okay. it's a research paper so that happened and when and from 2018 up till now communicating with lot of people who have interest in the same topic and trying to bang on the doors of like you know many church leaders and on social media please take this topic seriously because every time you put goa inquisition on youtube you will see so many channels run by other indians who mm-hmm. think they are historians okay and saying so bad was the church in goa and st mm-hmm. francis xavier killed people and what and what not so I, so now speaking about inquisition mm-hmm. um now now not that you have mentioned that many of us go on youtube or like you know on google and all these places what exactly is inquisition okay so like you know to make it short and sweet if okay. you want to just tell somebody in like you know one yeah. click inquisition is nothing else but inquiry hmm. okay inquiry yeah. so what suggest yes so uh, it is an inquiry carried out by the church to find out whether certain christian is doing something wrong which is against the faith okay that's it that is the basic understanding of inquisition so it started with the uh, pope lucius the 3rd okay uh he started it in the year around uh, yeah he, he was the one who started in in the year 1184 okay 1184 and he did it to counter certain heresies by waldensians and cathars okay okay now who are these waldensians and cathars heresy means something a uh, teaching which is contrary to the uh, christian faith okay okay So say suppose you come and say Jesus is not the son of God he's just some mm-hmm. angel or just a prophet this and that mm-hmm. so that will be against the faith yeah correct the heresy now when we look at history one thing <coughs> as like you know a researcher or a historian or whatever one thing is you need to understand the context of those times mm-hmm. you need to understand the culture the mentality the mindset what was going around now people for in europe at that time mm-hmm. it was only christianity as the the religion yeah true any other religion was considered false true okay after the edict of milan in 314 where emperor constantine stopped the persecution of christians by the roman empire uh, christianity spread like you know yeah very rapidly because emperor himself had accepted christianity so the subjects would accept mm-hmm. but it's not that the whole europe accepted christianity mm-hmm. not even until 1540 1517 also when the protestant reformation came mm-hmm. okay it just like you know some parts of europe converted just some years or decades before that mm-hmm. so there were some tribes and pockets here and there which had not accepted christianity mm-hmm. so these people were influencing the other christians and trying to pull them back to the old pagan religions okay old pagan practices which included for witchcraft child sacrifices mm mm-hmm. okay and then uh, yeah sort of black magic and whatever you can call okay mm-hmm. even sometimes killing people thinking that they are possessed with demons mm mm-hmm. so this is not some church thinking this is a thinking which has come from <coughs> pagan religions 
Okay. Okay. So what happened there is the Pope Pope Lucius had sent certain uh, priests to like you know talk to them, investigate about what is happening. Okay. So uh, when there was this Peter of Saint Peter of Verona, okay, the Pope sent him, and these people killed him. Mm-hmm. So like you know the Emperor Ferdinand came and said, uh, you see they are not listening. We are trying to investigate. Mm, mm. They are not listening. They have in fact killed this monk. You have to take strict action. Mm. So when the in- inquisition was uh, established by Pope Lucius, it was only inquiry. Okay. And if a person is really found guilty, they were handed over to the civil authorities. It was up to the civil authorities to pass a judgment or give the punishment as they wished, not what the church has said. <coughs> church okay. couldn't pass any judgment. Okay. Couldn't give them any particular. punishment okay. it was the civil authority that was deciding it was king ferdinand who was persisting so he came up to pope gregory the 9th mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and pope gregory the 9th uh, passed a bull mm-hmm. ad extirpanda that was in on 15th may 1252 okay okay and uh, he introduced torture okay in inquisition so inquisition means when you are when you are uh, investigating and you find that these people are really not admitting their fault you have all the evidences for that mm-hmm. and they are not mm-hmm. accepting it so you could use torture so to get the truth out so this king is responsible of course okay and the pope gave him a license because like you know the way he presented the situation to him because mm. they had killed saint peter of verona Okay. Okay. Fine. So and they said if we just let them go they will come in, in, inside the church and start killing priests like mm. just like that. They may even kill you he said. Could okay. be. Could okay. be. That is what he must have said. So fine. The pope said all right. But the pope made certain conditions there. He said see that they don't lose their limbs. Mhm. See that it does not causes death. Whatever okay. torture you are using it mm-hmm. should not cause death if it causes death then we have to think about it mm. okay so that is how inquisition started then mm. uh, king ferdinand would later on take it seriously and with pope sixtus the fourth okay he would allow torture with severity Mm. and that would happen in the year 1478 onwards okay. okay so this is how in 1478 onwards the spanish inquisition will begin mm. okay and slowly we will realize that from spain the inquisition idea will come even in portugal okay, okay. so what had happened in spain is there were jews and muslims okay So King Ferdinand said the newly converted Christians who were Jewish mm-hmm. or Muslims before are getting influenced by the other Jews and Muslims who did not convert I see okay and they are challenging the faith mm. so that is how he went to Pope Sixtus the 4th again and again and got the inquisition established in Spain okay. and he started torturing the Jews now this is objective history Mm-hmm. who is responsible whose sin it is this and that we cannot say on absolute judgment okay. okay. so uh, you know you are not shefali with them not subhash willing to <laughs> of course so not. we we like you know even the church encourages us to be objective towards history but how objective is history we don't know yeah okay so we cannot say whatever king ferdinand did was totally wrong neither can we say that the jews were totally innocent or they were totally victims or whatever it's a confusion mm-hmm. but this is how things happened okay okay could be that they were really influencing and they were trying to have a revolt against the church and okay. as i said again the context at that time the church was just not a religious authority it was mm-hmm. also a political authority okay. the pope was just <coughs> not a religious leader Mm. spiritual leader he was also a political leader in those days we had something called papal states and all those things <coughs> so so how exactly then this this inquisition just end up coming to goa goa for that we need to understand how uh, the inquisition went to portugal because the portuguese ruled goa okay right so 
around 15 uh, f- uh, 14 or something like that mm-hmm. okay uh, i'll just i'll just make that sure because i wrote it here i okay. wrote it okay yes that's in 1536 okay uh, till then what happened when the spanish inquisition was going on the jews and muslims started migrating to portugal because they were being tortured there in spain fine and they formed almost like you know uh, 25% of the population of portugal okay then in 1536, you know, what had happened, certain famines happened, droughts happened, this and that happened in Portugal. And like, you know, what Hitler did. Mm-hmm. So in those times, they blamed the Jews. Okay. Okay. And, you know, they blamed the Jews for very orthodox reason. Because, you see, we always blame the Jews for the murder of Jesus. Okay. For Jesus being crucified. So that narrative somebody must have told like, you know, mm-hmm. you know, when uh, the Jews accused Jesus, our Lord, to be crucified, they said, let his blood be shed on us and on our children. Mm-hmm. So wherever they go, uh, this thing, destruction happens in that country. So somebody must have manipulated the Portuguese mind. Mm-hmm. So in 1536, the Inquisition was established in Portugal by Pope Paul III. Mm-hmm. Okay, because again they said the Jews are influencing the Christians or novo conversos, that is the newly converts mm-hmm. from the Jewish settlements. Now we know that in the year in the 15th century, mm-hmm. when the Ottoman Turks blocked the passage for the Europeans <coughs> to trade with India okay. and China, they blocked the Silk Route. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Uh, they used to travel through land from Europe through Iraq Middle East Afghanistan Pakistan and then through like you know the route through Punjab and all come to India from India they would go to China and that was the Hmm. Silk Route as they say so when the Ottoman Turks did that we know that Spain and Portugal set out to discover routes new routes to India and the only way possible was the sea route Mm-hmm. So we know Vasco da Gama was the person who discovered the sea route to India. Okay. Where else? True. Columbus landed up in America. In America. He thought it was India. So this yeah. discovery, the news went to the king of Portugal and Spain, and they <coughs> started both fighting. Oh. Like you know, who has the control? Because mm-hmm. remember, <laughs> when Columbus went there, mm-hmm. uh, Portuguese are this side. But somewhere the territories used to like, you know, match, they used to meet at one certain points. Mm -hmm. For example, Brazil is Portuguese, rest of the Americas is Spanish. True, true. Now, why did that happen? You know, in those days, it's just not uh, history and thinking which was totally different. Mm -hmm. Even the world map was different. Mm -hmm. They thought they had the perfect world map. They did not have the perfect world map. The maps developed and afterwards when we had satellites and all, then we have the proper maps as of mm-hmm. today so they went to Pope Alexander the sixth and they said see this fight is happening now both countries are Christian countries mm-hmm. so it was not like you know good for Christians to fight so in those days you know the highest authority is the Pope so they went to the Pope the Pope said I will take the map I'll draw a line straight I'll divide the world the East is for the Portuguese because the Portuguese discovered the East the west is for the Spanish because they discovered the west Mm -hmm. and he drew a straight line in that came Brazil as well so Brazil Mm -hmm. happened according to their wrong map Brazil (laughs) happened to fall in sort of Africa or whatever I don't know so it happened to fall in the east so that is how the Portuguese captured Brazil Mm -hmm. at that moment the Pope gave them a certain privilege Mm -hmm. which is called the Padroado okay patronage what was there in this patronage in whichever land they occupy and colonize the mm-hmm. Spanish and the Portuguese they had to assist the missionaries to do mission work okay to spread the gospel okay, okay. now of course you know as Christians Matthew 20 20 go throughout the whole world and proclaim the good news whoever believes baptize them in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit this is a mandate which Jesus gave us they were following that mandate okay so, under the Padroado, the church was functioning in the Spanish colonies and in the Portuguese colonies. Mm-hmm. This is how it functioned. St. Francis Xavier came to Goa in 1542. 
remember that he is also accused saying no he is responsible for the mm-hmm. inquisition yeah. you must have yeah. read it so when that happened uh he wrote a letter in the year 1546 on 16th may okay from where he did he write this letter he wrote this letter from a place called amboina now where mm-hmm. is amboina amboina is one of the islands of indonesia okay what did he say in that letter you know i found it so difficult to get that letter i knew the date and the this and that uh, uh, anand kagba priyolkar mentions it in his book and uh, i surfed everywhere i was not getting copies and somehow i went to the archives mm-hmm. uh, you find this particular letter you find only in the collection by silvado rego okay. now silvado rego is also a missionary priest and the pope had asked him to give reports of the occupations of the portuguese in mm-hmm. the east mm-hmm. okay. so he compiles the works of saint francis xavier also wow. and only in his collection you find this letter you will not find this letter so easily in any other collection mm-hmm. of the letters of saint francis xavier <coughs> so you know what he writes another necess- uh, he writes to king john the 3 mm-hmm. another necessity that is most needed here is the institution of the office of the holy inquisition mm-hmm. holy office of the inquisition here on the fortress okay because there are many jews and muslims finish that's it mm-hmm. this is exactly what he says oh and now shefali went there and also like you know saint francis xavier brought the inquisition here and this and that, that. i was like confused are he doesn't mention hindus hmm he mentions only jews and muslims only two religions okay forget about using the word hindu that is another topic we will talk later on he says he does not even say heathens and pagans or like you know non believers those were the words which were used for the hindus yeah so he just mentions jews and muslims i again revisited the passage he says another necessity which is needed here on the fortress okay i want to use goa a fortress <laughs> then i went back again on the title to see this letter was written from amboina where is amboina i went there and i'll tell you that island okay. is totally a fortress i searched on the net okay and it is still preserved there if you go to indonesia there so and why is he saying another necessity here in india Mm-hmm. is the need of the holy office of the inquisition he mentions the word india and like you know are why he saying india then mm. amboina is not in india then i realized are goa was the capital of the whole portuguese colonies in the far east correct and for the portuguese anything including goa and the far east was india mm. that is why we have a name of a country called west indies it means western india exactly and we have exactly. east indies mm. that is eastern india so for the europeans everything was india so when they came here so that was the thing so the place of jurisdiction was not restricted to the boundaries of the goa of today mm-hmm. whatever they could conquer in the far east for them was totally india it came under the jurisdiction of goa okay. that is why he says there another necessity here in india is the institution of the holy inquisition Okay that is why he says india and then he says because there are many jews and muslims here on the fortress so okay. he is actually talking about that particular island mm-hmm. no okay. wonder why today indonesia is the largely muslim populated country which around i think 95% population is muslim it's okay. a muslim majority country okay. and okay. these are different islands because they had fled the <laughs> you know mm-hmm. coast where the portuguese had come because they knew they would trouble and they had gone there okay okay so he wanted the inquisition to be established there in amboina okay now before that and after that also he has written to letters to the king to the pope but he never ever again mentions the inquisition the need of the inquisition mm-hmm. because he was not talking about the other places he was talking only about amboina that's it okay so yes. like you know and then the further question how bad is this inquisition to call it like you know oh saint francis if you call the inquisition how bad was it exactly exactly so th- you know that question keeps coming to my mind because uh, we are all wrapped around uh, you know sometimes inquisition does not even you know when you just mentioned that it was about inquiry and yes i mean it's just the word you know that's that's how you define inquisition by the word inquiry 
so inquisition when it comes to quite of us in our minds it can come like you know like how they put it burning at stake and cutting of hands and all that stuff so you know the, we 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 have seen the kashmir files and now we are hearing about the govan files and uh, you know we have me, i have watched the movie and i have seen how disastrous the situation is and they claim that it was even worse they haven't shown it that it was you know they did not like to show the audience but how terrible was the goan inquisition see the goan inquisition lasted for around 235 years no oh. and it was not straight 235 years okay in between the inquisition was stopped okay okay and then continued again and in another few decades it was totally abolished in the year 18 1814 something okay okay so um yeah around 1820 it was totally abolished in mm-hmm. goa mm-hmm. now was it so terrible you know the accounts that we have today mm-hmm. we need to realize that they have been written from a certain perspective okay 1517 the protestant reformation started okay protestant and th- they were also travelers mm-hmm. and these people like anand kagba priyolkar even shefali vaidya and uh, i don't know whether subhash vidlinker follows and reads anything <laughs> in english mm-hmm. so they were mostly from protestants okay and you know protestants like you know in those days were totally like do anything but you need to inculcate hatred against the catholic church true so no matter even if it is a small thing make it a big thing and stage it like a big thing mm-hmm. so that was the attitude as i said to you the church in those days was not only a religious institution or spiritual institution it also practiced political power okay so, so state and religion was mixed at that time Together. so the pope and the king were equally important to pass a judgment okay the pope could stop a judgment okay which the king is going to pass mm-hmm. that much power he had so uh um, two people are very important here two people's accounts are very important that is charles dillon and francois pirard okay uh, francois pirard is also french and charles dillon is also french and uh, uh, Fr- uh, charles dillon wrote a huge account of this thing mm-hmm. uh, his experience in goa because he was charged <coughs> under the inquisition okay okay and so francois he, pirard also so he was in goa uh, he was in goa for quite okay. some time i think two or three years mm-hmm. and when i read through his book you know I got the British publication of it, the okay. English translation. He originally wrote in French, and you know the uh, what you say, the publisher's note which was there. My God, what language it was! Mm-hmm. This horrible crime of the Portuguese in Goa, alongside with the Catholic Church, such a disaster. And this, I really thought it was like you know, literally people were going inside somebody's homes and catching them and killing them. Okay but that did not happen when i wrote the introduction written by charles dillon himself you know how he starts mm-hmm. he says over the years i have realized that i have not been persecuted by the church but by the governor of damau because of his personal enmity with him is it i'm like you know are this guy is interesting man let me read what is there and anand okay. kagba pirolkar in his book the goa inquisition himself has inserted these accounts of charles dillon in his book Mm-hmm. and i want to tell people you know read it you know what happens is what i'll tell you this psychological thing which anand kagwa priyolkar did he already gives you a bad idea about something so much so you don't want to read that okay 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 you really don't want to read that when mm-hmm. i was reading his book like you know i said oh my god so terrible thing but i went to read i said let me see what it is mm-hmm. and i got a different picture about it later on mm-hmm. i got a different picture and i read the accounts of franco pirard also uh, he has lot of volumes as a traveler okay and um he also writes about the inquisition but i would refer to charles dillon and say like you know one thing i noticed what he said is burning at stake mm-hmm. people think that everybody yeah. like every day somebody was burnt at stake people yeah. think that way how the inquisition worked Now if a newly convert is accused of saying like you know he is falling back to the old practices now in goa it was hinduism mm. i will no longer call it hinduism we were animists hinduism is not one single religion i will talk on that later mm. so for now we'll say it hinduism so you are come you have become a catholic 
you are supposed to practice these things but mm-hmm. say suppose you know one side you are going to the church other side you are going to the temple okay yeah uh, giving a cock or giving some uh, coconut or rice or whatever even sometimes sacrificing babies oh my one God. practice that existed is uh, like you know if the first born child is a girl you have to kill that child because okay. the first born has to be boy that's terrible yeah that belief was there and if you see some ancestral houses in goa i have investigated these cases i used to mm-hmm. go with some people because they used to see t- disturbances <laughs> in the houses mm-hmm. we always found a record of some human bones of children and this and that is it and they are old grandparents and all would tell you know my grandmother told that one child was sacrificed in this house mm. because something terrible was going on and this and that so imagine <coughs> in those days human sacrifices were happening mm. why in those days if you surf on internet today tyson you will find news in some parts of india till today okay human sacrifices are happening that's the reality <laughs> now you imagine the church is here in goa they are giving you the christian faith and you still go on doing human sacrifices why will the church not want to stop it true that's true that too done by the members of the church the inquisition was not meant for anybody else but for the newly converted christians so that they don't drift away from the original teachings of christianity and bring something else in it so let me get this straight um inquisition wasn't for the hindus no it was not, not. neither for the muslims no uh, i mean they, it was for the muslims in a sense that uh, not to persecute muslims as such but to okay. see that the christians are not getting influenced by muslims okay okay so, so through of the hindus also to see that the newly converted christians are not getting influenced by the hindus so basically it was for us it was for the christians only it was for the christians okay Okay. So I'll tell you how it worked. So say suppose somebody a newly converted Christian is accused of doing something like you know witchcraft or black magic mm-hmm. or whatever which is against the uh, Christian faith. That person was brought. Okay. First thing they would do is find out whether this person is really Christian or no. If this person was found to be a Hindu, they would leave. Okay. okay. That much care was taken. Okay. I'm not saying this on my own. Charles Dillon writes it in his accounts. Cool. Okay. Okay. Because he says that uh, there was one Hindu in the prison, and that too, you know, who that Hindu was was a Brahmin, who was a physician, mm-hmm. who used to come to examine him, and he says, "I did not see any other Hindu apart from him in this prison." Oh my God. That means that prison was meant for those who are arrested under the Inquisition, and there was not a single any other Hindu. Mm-hmm. My question to Shafali Vaidya Subhash Velinkar is only one simple question: Tell me a name of one. Hindu practicing person who has been executed under the Inquisition. So there was none. There was none. Not even Anand Kagba Priyolkar mentions. Now you will say, oh, they must have destroyed the data. They say fine, but you know, in in the traditional people, our uh, Hindus in Goa also, we mm-hmm. have this oral tradition. Now you tell me, how did they come to know that there was a temple in Kortani, which is Mangeshi? and that their people shifted the deity from kortali to uh, ponda present day mangeshi mm-hmm. how did they know because that oral tradition is there that tradition goes on like you know through pictures mm-hmm. and art and storytelling okay True. how sai baba became famous because of storytelling uh, in True. a sense the tradition oral tradition the oral at tradition. least you tell no okay you know so and so person from so and so village and this and that was mm-hmm. executed under the inquisition he was a practicing hindu If okay. you tell me, give me a name of one person like that, mm-hmm. I'm ready to believe that Hindus were persecuted under Inquisition. Okay. But it was your ancestors, sir, and my ancestors, and the ancestors of us <laughs> Christians in Goa, whose uh, whose ancestors were persecuted, yours and mine, mm. not the Hindus. Okay, yeah. It is uh, our pain. It is our pain. But they are crying about it. It makes sense. So then, what used to happen is, after making sure that this person is a Christian, then an investigation would start. like you know whether that person really has done that or not mm-hmm. and you know it was very easy for the person to like you know get bailed out how okay. just do auta de fe now what was auta de fe um auta de fe was a grand celebration uh, the uh, now see uh, there was an inquisitor mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. an advocate to investigate okay. and like you know fight a case on your behalf okay. because those people were like literally wanting to prove that you have done some crime so the grand inquisitor would come from rome okay and this would happen as charles dylan says in 2 or 3 years okay so after the face celebration of that ritual of this thing would come only after 2 or 3 years mm-hmm. this is why charles dylan had to wait around 2 and a half years for okay. this thing okay for his uh, inquiry to happen and the judgment to happen otherwise he would have been released so what happened is they would be all brought to uh, old goa wearing that certain dress was there for mm-hmm. those who are caught under inquisition and if they say outa de fe if they confess admit mm. now they are not found guilty but if they admit their faith in christ okay they admit their christian faith they would be released okay if they are found guilty punishments would be like uh, confiscating properties paying some fines or mm. become a slave and work for certain number of years okay. okay these were the punishments burning at stake was the rarest of rare punishments which was given even if you read wikipedia no okay on record there are only 66 to 100 people mm-hmm. who were actually burnt at stake in 235 years of inquisition okay understood so in 235 years of the inquisition only 100 to 66 people have been 66 to 100 people have been burnt at stake and most interesting is many of them are were burned after their death i see so this death happened why because the inquiry would take so long that people would actually die <coughs> in between that inquiry okay so they would be either declared innocent or guilty even after death if they were uh, declared guilty their bodies would be taken and burnt okay okay okay, okay because you see they were buried they were so buried. takes time to like you know decompose so mm-hmm. half decomposed body they would remove and actually burn mm-hmm. now why burning burning signifies that you don't deserve christian burial this okay. is the reason why they used to burn them okay you don't deserve christian burial or you don't deserve a christian death because you have done something unchristian now again i'm saying mm-hmm. we need to understand the mentality of those people at that time okay they are people of that time Mm-hmm. In those days, secularism, state, and political uh, divide was not there. State and religion divide was not there. Mm-hmm. Church mm-hmm. and state was not separate. They were one. Yeah, true. For them, uh, Christian world was the only world. True. No other. Okay, that uh, like you know pluralism and respect for other persons' religion, this and that was not there. That is not only about Christians. Yeah. Even Hindus did not have respect for other religions. they do not tolerate other religions they would consider them impure mm-hmm. that is why that hatred for muslims and christians mm-hmm. muslims did not like christians and other religions mm-hmm. this is there for in every religion yeah i'm sure it is yeah, there in every there, religion and everywhere. we need to understand the times and histories and mentality mm-hmm. how we human beings and our thinking has evolved over the years mm-hmm. so this is how Uh, the inquisition and like you know the executions would happen yeah. one interesting thing in charles dylan's record is uh, he writes about uh, uh, burning at stake of okay. one person mm-hmm. and you know when that happened from the time he came he asked somebody when was the last time a person was burnt at stake he asked another prisoner he said some four or three outa de phase before now i told you one outa de fe happens in two or three years Okay. Now four or three out of the phase before means you multiply. Let's take the minimum for their benefit. Mm-hmm. Two years into again I am taking minimum three years. Mm-hmm. That is in six years or eight years. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you know, from the time Charles Dylan is here, eight years back or ten years back, one person was burnt at stake. Okay. One Only person. one person. Only. Okay. Only one person was burnt at stake. Ten mm-hmm. years before, from the time Charles mm-hmm. Dylan had uh, was imprisoned here in mm-hmm. uh, Goa. Okay. Now Frank of Pirard also gives this thing, uh, certain records, mm-hmm. and they are like you know over exaggerative mm-hmm. about what Frank of Pirard is writing. Okay. But you know when I read the accounts, uh, that was totally different what he is saying. Okay. So I am telling people these things are available. Otherwise, you know, when we are putting this video down, we'll put the links 
in yeah. the description you will below. find it in that yes so that people can go and read the records you yeah. they need to spend some time reading because you know yeah. we can't talk everything true yeah. true so this is how uh, the inquisition in goa happened now you know she mentions you know shafali vaidya that i don't know did, did francis xavier get the inquisition in goa did he get it he did not get it as i told you <coughs> he wrote that letter in the year 1546 16th may mm-hmm. that too from amboina he never intended it for goa or india as such okay okay that is why if you see if you go to kerala okay they have never even heard of inquisition oh you go to bombay they have never have heard of inquisition you think there were no christians during that time in bombay there were mm. there were no christians in uh, kerala there were there were christianity entered india right from the first century with st thomas the apostle true right so why it happened only in goa and mm. some territories which are under the portuguese this thing mm. let me make one point clear here it is not the catholic church which imposed the inquisition in goa it is the portuguese government which imposed the inquisition in goa that is why i told you when st francis xavier wrote the letter he did not write to the pope asking for the inquisition he wrote to the king mm-hmm. coming back to my uh, topic on the padrovado okay okay the patronage which the pope had given to spain and portugal to administer the church in their colonies mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so the portuguese king had direct control over the church administration in their territories not the pope Mm-hmm. So the Pope also had realized that Ari Baba, these people, the Spanish and the Portuguese, are not doing a very good job when it comes to mission work. So mm-hmm. he started a congregation called Propaganda Fide, and he was, would send. What was was that Propaganda? Propaganda Fide? Fide is an office, like you know, one department in the church, mm-hmm. which is responsible for carrying out mission work. Okay. Okay. To take the gospel to others. Okay, fine. And uh, he sent missionaries, even to India, America, everywhere. So a fight started between the missionaries sent by the Pope, that is propaganda fide, and missionaries of the Padrovado under the Portuguese patronage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Understood. So yeah. much so they had to take the case back to the Pope again to settle down. Mm-hmm. So he said, "Are those territories uh, are mine?" The Portuguese said, "You said no. The whole East is mine." The Pope said, "The whole East is not yours. Whatever you occupy is yours. If you have not occupied uh, some parts of India, how it can become your territory?" True. I am sending missionaries there where you have not occupied. Mm-hmm. So, so much that is the difference. Mm. So, people need to understand it is not the Catholic Church officially the Pope instituting Inquisition in Goa. It is the King of Portugal who instituted Inquisition in Goa. Mm-hmm. That is under the Padre Adão. So, the one whom you need to hold responsible is not the Pope. Mm. It is the King of the Port- of Portugal whom you should. okay uh, ac- uh hold accountable so and st francis xavier <coughs> did not mean it for india but even if he meant it was it so bad do you think now you see today if somebody is caught doing black magic or some superstitious thing mm-hmm. or some human sacrifices will the government of india not take action on that definitely obviously the police will come and arrest and maybe if you have if he, that person has encouraged human sacrifice mm-hmm. killing of a human being to conduct some magic maybe given them capital punishment true if that person has been involved in this for so long like you know he has put many people to death mm, if we are sense. doing it today what they did that those many years back it had mm. to start somewhere no if it had not to start anywhere it wouldn't end anywhere mm-hmm. okay Makes like sense. sati they stopped it at that time that mm. is why we don't have sati today so true. they had to stop human sacrifices black magic practices or whatever this and that mm-hmm. from that time itself mm-hmm. got it no so and the inquisition in goa started in the year 1560 okay st francis xavier died in 1552 so it started 8 years after his death and around 12 years after he writing the letter mm-hmm. demanding from the king to <coughs> establish the inquisition but anyways Shafali Vaidya has blamed him for that. Is, well, that is what, and all of us like you know. Even I accepted that maybe he he must have done something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and when I came to know this, this is like you know, I said this is nonsense. What she is saying. Well, um, yeah. Moving on to the next one, you know. Okay, did the Portuguese really destroy the temples? 
you know i i went with brother francis mm-hmm. with whom i had done the interview first in the year 2021 okay and this year i had the opportunity of hosting him in goa and he that because the topic came by a beloved cm pramod savant <laughs> yeah so he said we need to rebuild the temples destroyed by the portuguese i said yes you need to mm-hmm. okay you do we don't have problem mm-hmm. do it but if you start saying that uh, thankfully he has not said it if you start saying that temples were destroyed and churches were built in that place that you really need to go back in history and search mm-hmm. i went on sites i have taken you also on those sites yeah and i yeah. showed you that the place of the ruins of those temples are still there till today mm-hmm. the church is built some 2 kilometers or 3 kilometers away from that site mm-hmm. so you tell me this theory called temple is destroyed and on the, and that place church is built mm-hmm. we went to verna yeah we saw the mardol site yeah okay uh, sri mahalsa uh, devi mandir no. that site is still there and they are building a nice temple there the church is around 1 and 1/2 kilometers away true uh, i took you to diwar mm-hmm. okay after saint matthias church you have to go around uh, half a kilometer or more mm-hmm. around a kilometer and there you find <coughs> the saptakoteshwar uh, temple ruin site yeah. now you tell me on that ruin site is there a church mm-hmm. now there is a controversy whether there, there whether it is a temple or no that also Yeah. but even if they claim it as a temple there is no church on that side mm-hmm. so why did that happen then i took brother francis to lotoli also okay uh, i took him to kortali we were searching we were searching in kortali where that mangeshi old temple ruin site is mm-hmm. but they don't claim that church is built in that place nobody claims that is it yeah they okay. don't claim it they say that site is there i'm still searching and i f- hope after watching this in uh, videos somebody will come forward at least from kortal and say are matthew i'll show you where that place is mm. okay so of course they found some ruins there but where exactly that spot i did not find maybe asi has done something about it but i did not find in kortali i went to mangeshi mm-hmm. mangeshi was built in around in the 16th century mm-hmm. when the inquisition was going on i'll tell you one interesting thing there the church in ponda started during the time of inquisition okay mm-hmm. the uh, the this thing uh, the uh, are i forgot the name this the of the ponda kings mm-hmm. okay the uh, starts in s forget it i'm not <laughs> getting it now it slipped from my mind so in 1726 mm-hmm. he gifted that land that king Mm-hmm. Sonde Rajas. <laughs> oh shit! I got it. The Sonde Rajas. Okay. They gifted the lands Ponda, Kankon, mm-hmm. okay, Sawadde, these places, to the Portuguese. Mm-hmm. And 1726, 1820, the Inquisition will end. Okay. Started in 1560. So in the time of Inquisition, these Hindu kings are mm-hmm. gifting Hindu lands to these. brutal portuguese then make sense okay mm-hmm. now there is this mangeshi temple mm-hmm. they say no from kartali they ran there fine okay inquisition going on church is come there in okay. the 18th century inquisition is going on nobody came and broke the mangeshi temple hmm and the church is not very far it's just 1 and 1/2 km away from there okay okay and they did not destroy mangeshi temple in fact but these people will never admit that the portuguese were the ones who helped in building of mangeshi temple like you know that temple has gone under renovations and restorations and like you know repairs mm. lot of time is it so the portuguese also funded it okay they also funded it that is why if you look at its architecture there is a little portuguese influence there but in its uh, roofing and all that chef chefali vaidya she just says that none of those repairs and all was allowed of the temples you say that uh, she is in another time you know she is such a big liar <laughs> she told that how cyber pulthuti hoita is a song by those hindus oh, who are going crossing yeah, river oh because God. of the inquisition i'm like what nonsense well can can you explain or throw some more light on that song 
this song was composed by the grand uncle of uh, MLA of my constituency, Ardona constituency, uh, advocate Carlos Alvarez Ferreira. Mm -hmm. Okay, his grand uncle. And I met uh, Sir Carlos and he told me about it. And in one of the interviews before election, when this Kiran Kandulkar had accused him of uh, land grabbing and whatever. Mm -hmm. So he explained there his history okay. that this song was composed by my grand great grand uncle. Okay. And he gave me a PDF file about of it, mm. which I, I maybe saw, you I can saw, take I a screenshot of it and show to our viewers also. So it's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. You know, it was published somewhere in the year 1927 in Bastara, where I come from. Oh. There was this uh, Tipografia Rangel, the printing press, which mm -hmm. is kept in the Goa Museum today. Okay. That printing press was working for whole of Asia, mm -hmm. almost. So they printed it and that became a song. Now you tell me, is that song popular among Hindus in Goa or is it popular among Catholics in Goa? I bet you it is popular most among Catholics in Goa. Okay, yeah, because uh, I mean, I've been hearing it from my childhood. Yeah, I heard it uh, for the first time for Catholic weddings. I never heard it for any Hindu weddings. Have you seen it being played for any Hindu weddings? Have you attended at least Hindu weddings? I've attended some few, but <coughs> I don't think so. I've ever heard it. So I want to ask those uh, viewers of us who are Hindus, uh, is this song so popular among you? Because I know for every wedding, mm -hmm. for reception, we play that song. Mm -hmm. I've heard it from my childhood. And you know that song, <laughs> the lyrics of those songs, Damulya Matvantu Kalvantan Sokhedu. I'm like, who will sing this type of song if you're running away with a deity to some other place because somebody's troubling you? Mm. Using the word Kalvant. Do you even yeah. know what is the word Kalvant? It's like, you know. Because it didn't make s at first, first, even I got confused, you know, and I started sharing with some of my friends. Like, mm. uh, you know, Chef Ali is uh, saying that. You know that this 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 Hindus were so desperate that they you know they they want they could not find their way on the other side like and they were struggling because of the Portuguese rule mm -hmm. and uh, you know for some time I I started believing in her and uh, until it did not make sense to me when I actually was uh, reading the song and it spoke about temple prostitutes mm. Kolwant Kolwants right and uh, so. You know, or is is that song left for free interpretations? Now we'll have to ask uh, Dr. Carlos Alvarez's grand uncle. I know, right? <laughs> what he really meant with that and all that. So I think if he, only he will know. But the thing is, we know that that song was like you know, literally put in paper in 1927. Okay. Okay. So it was not for. It, it had nothing to do with this temple yes. problems and thing is now he says that even though that song like you know uh, the tune existed before that he says okay okay the tune existed he made it a formal printed form mm -hmm. okay and whatever music is there printing is there his great grand uncle did it the song already existed he said came as a tradition this and that mm -hmm. but it looks evidently that that song was popular among the Govan Catholic community, mm -hmm. the Kunbis, mm -hmm. the Gaudis. It was popular among them, mm -hmm. not the Hindu Sarasat Brahmins. Okay. And the shameless people, they have already started wearing those Kunbi dresses and all. Mm -hmm. They used to literally spit on these Kunbis, the Sarasat Brahmins, mm -hmm. discriminate with them. I wouldn't say with them. I am one of the Kunbis. Okay. I come from that community. So spit on us, discriminate with us. Mm -hmm. Keep us away for wearing, even wearing that. So mm -hmm. forget Portuguese. Saraswat Brahmins did not want us to wear those dresses. Mm -hmm. And today they are making money by dancing that dance. Mm. So, if I get this clear, I, I mean, uh, what was the problem, you know, because the the, the boatmen wouldn't al want to cross the river. Was the river rough? That, you know, I think... Uh, I think uh, Advocate Carlos, the MLA of Aldona constituency, will be in a better position to tell. Okay. Okay. okay because he may have no uh, quite history about it. But as you asked, we came to this topic because of temple destruction. Temple. And I told you that those ruin sites are still there. Mm -hmm. Churches are somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Why did these temples get into ruins? Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you so many people have left their house in Goa, gone to London, settled in London or in Europe, mm. doing Portuguese passport. Look at their house. Is it not in ruin? Mm. Look at the Sankwal Church. Is it not in ruin? Look at Saint mm. Augustine's Tower. Not in ruin. Mm. I'm like, if you are going to abandon a structure to be left in this harsh rain and storm conditions and go somewhere else, nobody to look after. Will the Portuguese look after? Why? They won't look after it. That is why it got ruined. Okay. Okay. Now the thing is, the Portuguese in 1560 when the Inquisition had started, they had put certain restrictions on certain Hindu practices. But the restrictions were not for the Hindus as such. Mm-hmm. It was the restrictions for Christians who are attending Hindu ceremonies. Mm-hmm. Now see, the thing is, uh, certain in families, certain members used to get convert, become Christians. Certain members would not. Okay. They would remain Hindus. <laughs> okay. So if they are having weddings. Mm-hmm. Now, from this family, this particular person is a Christian. He is going for this family wedding. Mm-hmm. They had put rules on them, saying that you cannot stand in the area where that fire is, where they mm-hmm. take the circles around the fire. You cannot stand that. You cannot put tickly on your forehead. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You cannot put the thread. Mm-hmm. So it was not for Hindus. It was not told to Hindus not to wear the thread. It was told to the newly converted Christians who are attending Hindu ceremonies not to wear that thread okay. because you are a Christian that's obvious mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. will I wear a statue of Ganpati in my neck and room no. I will not do that as a convinced Catholic I wouldn't do that I would certainly wear a cross Hindus are open to wearing cross I don't stop them mm-hmm. they want to wear you wear I wouldn't wear a Ganpati this thing picture in my neck and I don't want to and I think that should be respected mm-hmm. doesn't mean I don't love my Hindu brothers and sisters Mm-hmm. So, my neighbors, all of them are Hindus. Mm-hmm. They don't even eat what we cook at home. So, what we do for Christmas and all, we want to give them something because for Ganesh, Diwali, they give us. We go to the market, buy something special for them and give. Mm-hmm. You see, this is how we have lived in harmony all this while. We go also go for their festivals. You see, mm-hmm. but you see, our neck is considered as like, you know, something close. When you put something in the neck, it is said something close to your heart. Mm-hmm. So, when I know Christ is the only Lord and Savior for me, why would I put some other lord in my neck? Mm. Correct? Okay. Mm. And putting a tickly also means giving a symbolism like, you know, you are belonging to some other religion. So that is why the Portuguese had stopped it. Okay. okay. Even certain dressing, dress code, they had stopped. So these were the certain rules, which restrictions which the Portuguese had put. Mm-hmm. Somebody must have spread a rumor saying that the Portuguese are troubling them. That is why the Hindus must have got scared and ran away from there. Mm. Now, when we say Hindus also, we need to be careful which Hindus. Okay. This is one reason. So, they left the place, they ran away. That is why it got ruined. Second reason is this. You find it in the letter of St. Francis Xavier only in the year 1543, uh, 23rd March or 20th March. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. So, what happened is, uh, people were getting converted. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we will be coming to that topic of mass conversion later on. So people were getting converted, especially the children, mm-hmm. and the children would go and teach the elders. Mm-hmm. Okay, they would go and teach the elders. When they come home, what they would do is these tulsis or small temples which were there in front of their house, they would break it. Mm-hmm. Now it is but logical, no? Today, if a Hindu becomes a Christian. Mm-hmm. When they go home, if they have those uh, pictures or images of Hindu gods, will they keep it? Mm-hmm. They won't. No. They will throw it away. Leave the Hindus aside. If a Catholic becomes a Protestant, okay. and you know how Protestants are, we so-called casually believers, they don't support image-making statues of any saint or Jesus or even crucifix. They tell you to throw away. So if I as a Catholic tomorrow become a Protestant or a believer, I will come and throw away all the statues of Mother Mary and crucifix and pictures of saint or whatever away. Mm -hmm. Because idolatry, idolatry is not entertained in monotheistic religion like Christianity. Mm -hmm. Correct? Idolatry is not there. We Catholics make statue, that is a (laughs) different topic. Mm -hmm. But you see, for us, those statues are idols. We cannot worship idols. Mm -hmm. I cannot even keep idols. The first commandment. Okay. Okay. So of course they would come and destroy the temple. Why do they need the temple anymore? Mm. So they would build a temple for the God whom they have received now. Okay. To whom they have sworn their commitment to. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So they would come home, destroy the temple, build a small chapel or a cross in front of their house. <laughs> Third reason is uh, the Brahmins got converted. Now, when you say Brahmins, it is obvious that they had family temple. Okay. They owned that family temple. Mm-hmm. Now they have become Christians. Mm-hmm. This is their temple. Okay. They are private temple. They have become Christians. Why would they keep that temple for somebody else? Mm. So they would destroy it, build a chapel or a church, okay. give it to the diocese or the, to the bishop or to the Portuguese to build a church. They are private property. They have become Christians. So <laughs> what is problem with somebody else? Mm. Let them do what they want to do with their own property, mm. right? Okay. And the fourth reason, you see, when conversions happened in Goa, this is also like, you know, you had a question on whether there were forced conversions okay. and I'll talk on that later, but this part I will talk here. Uh, there would be tribes. Mm-hmm. It's not like today. It's not like today how we have uh, this thing, you know, uh, individual conversions. Mm-hmm. Okay. We don't have individual conversions. In those days, there were tribes. Okay. Tribal mentality is, if the leader is doing this, the whole tribe will do that. Okay. If the leader believes in this, the whole tribe will believe in that. Mm-hmm. If the leader, if the chief is worshipping this particular god, the whole tribe will worship that god. Mm-hmm. This tribal mentality is not only of India. It was there in America, in Amazon, in Africa, everywhere. Mm-hmm. If you want to study tribes, they better go to Africa and study that or go to the tribes which are still <coughs> there in India. Mm-hmm. So, when these uh, tribes, the chief converted, Mm -hmm. the whole tribe would convert. And the whole tribe would have one particular temple, a totem, a particular place of worship. Mm -hmm. Now, since they have now converted, they rejected this God Mm -hmm. and they have accepted Jesus Christ. So, they would destroy the temple Mm -hmm. of that particular God, throw that God away, Mm -hmm. put Jesus in that place. Okay. And since that place is a place which belongs to this community, mm-hmm. let them build church, chapel, whatever they want. They mm-hmm. are private property. Okay. Govans were tribes. Mm-hmm. And what we say Hinduism today, you know, like I will be talking on that one religion. It was not so. Mm-hmm. So these are the four reasons why temples were broken, churches were built. I told you exactly first, like, you know, not exactly on the place where the temple was, Mm -hmm. elsewhere. Then Brahmins converted, they used their property where the temple was, a place of worship. Mm -hmm. The deity is changed, that's it. Mm -hmm. Then children would come, their house temples, the small, small temples in their houses, they would break that, put crucifix or a small chapel there, and then the tribes, Mm -hmm. the full community. The community owns this place of worship. The full community is become Christian. So they change the deity. Okay. So these are the four, what I found in my research. Cool. So, coming to this question, were the Hindus forced to convert? And also, why so many conversions? Mm, Good you came for that. Is there anything else? Mm, no all right so as i told you uh, why mass conversions exactly if there was no force conversion because obviously i will say there was no force conversions yeah then how comes such a huge number of people got converted yeah Uh, again what i just said Mm -hmm. tribes Mm -hmm. when afos the albuquer came here landed in cochin he encountered the paravas even St. Francis Xavier encountered the Paravas. The Paravas had certain issue with the Muslims. Mm-hmm. I think one person teased that one lady, a Parava lady or something, and there was a fight. Mm-hmm. Now, they did not have the equipments and weapons to like, you know, go and fight with the Muslims. Okay. So, they went to Alphonse, the Albuquerque. Somebody must have told them, somebody's come. Pakaloila. <laughs> okay. So, they went to the Pakalo. He said, Are Pakalya, <laughs> help us. Okay. Okay. He said, Okay, but I'll give you one condition. Mm-hmm. You have to become Christians. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Now you tell me, did they refuse the help which Albuquerque was giving? They did not. You know what they said? Mm-hmm. See, we went to so many gods. That is, uh, 
they went to the king of mysore mylapur the nearby kings and they also went to somebody else for help mm-hmm. they must have certainly prayed to their gods the gods mm-hmm. which they were worshiping like you know are please help us they must have not got help now this god is helping okay so they must have said yes if we win we will why not because mm-hmm. he has helped us to like you know win the war okay they fought they won the war mm. now there are people who keep the word <laughs> they are loyal to their word so there were 24 tribes so around 19 or 20 of them converted this is why mass conversion because if the chief converts mm. full mm-hmm. community mm-hmm. will convert no exactly imagine exactly. now 20 tribes means are hundreds and thousands of people mm. right when san francis xavier came here around four or five tribes were remaining okay and he knew what albuquer had done so he went to them he said you all had given a word oh saying that you all would convert <laughs> and you all have not kept it you all are still not converted so they said yeah nobody came to us okay so he said i will do he okay. did so he was actually fulfilling a contract which they themselves made with albuquer afons oh, de albuquer okay, okay. okay. Then when he came here, Saint Francis Xavier came to Goa. Mm-hmm. He realized that people were just baptized, but they were not educated in the faith. Okay. They were not taught the catechism. They were not taught the formulas. No prayers, nothing. This is why I said no. He sat down, translated the uh, translated the catechism into local language, mm-hmm. and taught to the local people. That happened. Then, when he preached in Goa. in his letter dated 1543 he talks about the brahmins who were exploiting the poor mm-hmm. people the kundis all these people okay so when he preached to them about a god a savior who doesn't want anything from you mm-hmm. the brahmin but is telling you give rice give this in the temple to appease the god mm-hmm. he is not asking you anything the man hanging on the cross is not asking you anything nothing material Okay. He just wants you to get baptized. Finish. Mm-hmm. You tell me why will you not feel happy? Mm-hmm. Then they would see the miracles which he is doing. Okay. As I said, raising the dead also. Mm-hmm. You think, Arey Baba, somebody comes here, turns water into wine in front of you. Why would you not follow that man? <laughs> For wine's sake, at least you would <laughs> convert. Yeah. True. For the sake of wine, at least. True. Arey, how many is Max Oda Pupa di ta ki ta ospani? So. those are the reasons why they would convert and as i said tribal mentality mm-hmm. so it was more of community conversions not individual conversions mm-hmm. individual conversions happened with brahmins okay because if one brahmin converts others will convert it was not so mm-hmm. they were more of individual nuclear people so that is yeah. why they would go individual whereas the kunbi is gaudi they were tribal so eklos adzalya dusra is apat so or at least the family would uh, convert okay, okay. as i said earlier uh, if this is one family some members would convert some not some now that doesn't mean father and son if the father converts obviously son would convert mm-hmm. but the father's brother uncle like you know say suppose your father converted obviously you would be converted mm-hmm. but your uncle from father's side or mother's side would not would so not. that is the family i'm talking about when i spoke okay. about before now there was an edict by king uh, John the Third, okay, in fifteen sixty seven, and because some people had complained to the king of Portugal, saying that forced conversions are happening, people are forcing, so the Portuguese are forcing the native people to convert, and he wrote nice edict saying that no missionary will force anybody to convert, <laughs> okay, because see, our job is to preach the word, and he uses the words of Jesus where he said. no one can come to me unless the father brings that person to me mm-hmm. he quotes these words in his edict and he says our job is to preach the word to come to christ it is the father's work god the father's work mm-hmm. okay we cannot force anybody to bring to christ mm-hmm. we, and then he goes further and says if we fall in temptation and commit sin on our own will mm-hmm. then we should also come back to the lord on our own will okay you see good theology he uses there and in fact he introduced certain punishments also if certain missionaries were caught in 
Is it? Yeah. Punishment for or, the missionary. Uh, yes, yeah, suspended for a missionary. <laughs> oh my okay? god. Okay. So they were taken care of, and uh, you know, uh, uh, let me come again to Franco Pirard, the traveler I was talking about who accounts. Uh, he mentions in his travels that you know, a good care was taken mm-hmm. that nobody is forced to convert. Okay. So say suppose this family is come or this person is come. and he wants to become christian mm-hmm. they had to stand in the court mm-hmm. and give an oral confession saying that on my own will okay. i am converting okay so the at the time of baptism the priest would ask mm-hmm. are you receiving baptism on your own free will and on your own conscience mm-hmm. okay and he would say yes mm-hmm. there were some who would refuse mm-hmm. okay no nobody could actually refuse because if they are coming there they are obviously coming there on their own will to receive baptism because before the day they receive baptism whole one year of preparation was there mm-hmm. it's called the catechumenate okay so one year back one person said father i want to receive baptism okay take catechism for one year no okay okay so learn the prayers this and that in that one year that person changes mind and goes away mm-hmm. then there are cases where people must have converted for the sake of allurement of wealth and privileges given by the portuguese that True. also could happen True. of course it True. is possible but the ones who complained about it mm-hmm. were not hindus it were missionaries themselves who conver- uh, complained to the king and to the pope mm-hmm. that there are people here who are converting only for the sake of the wealth and the privileges mm-hmm. which the portuguese government is giving it's not something good okay but see who are the ones who are complaining not the hindus the missionaries are complaining mm. now if they really wanted badly like you know people to uh, convert why would they complain saying that people are converting only for the sake of wealth mm. correct no exactly. that means they want to be sincere about preaching the word and they want people to be serious about conversion true or receiving baptism mm mm-hmm. and all that you know they threw rice in water and bread in water and if they drink that water they got christian this is not christian mentality this is hindu mentality of purity and pollution okay now i told you in my neighborhood i have my hindu neighbors they don't eat anything which we cook from my utensils mm-hmm. they consider as defilement pollution why because we eat beef mm-hmm. and if they eat from our vessel they will also get defiled or polluted mm-hmm. but they give us this is why i told you we used to we go to the market bring something for them and give them separately mm-hmm. okay many hindus in goa they will not eat from your plate mm-hmm. because they don't want to be defiled or polluted mm-hmm. so like that imagine thinking in those days if today even today if a shadow of a dalit like you know falls on the temple or on a brahmin that dalit is killed is it imagine what must have be happening in those days so this politics of pollution and purity is there the missionaries did not convert uh, hindus by throwing bread in the water we all know the only way by which a person becomes christian is through baptism mm-hmm. nothing else okay so did portuguese like you know or the missionaries did they destroy this culture because the the people had a particular way of like you know dressing or people had a uh, particular diet system that that food like say fali vaidya she mentioned about it like you know now she finds catholics you know having salt in their rice and so this distinction that has come between the hindus you know kokanes and the mm-hmm. kristao and all so did they actually destroy See, the culture actually i'll tell you it is uh, shefali vaidya's ancestors who destroyed goa culture <laughs> she openly says that she is saraswat brahmin okay correct from where the saraswat brahmin come they come from the river saraswati which is not in goa okay so before the saraswat brahmins come to goa who were here the kunbis gaudis velips dangar mm mm-hmm. we always eat salt <laughs> it is their problem they never eat salt why because their river is not salty mm. river yeah. saraswati is not salty it's a fresh water river mm-hmm. we are living in a this thing saline water 
coast or our rivers are saline mandovi zuari we are used to salt mm. okay they don't even eat onion so because you are not eating onion we should stop eating onion how uh, finance minister okay sitaraman she said no i have no problem if onion is become expensive i am not eating onion so because you are not eating onion others should not eat ever oh, come on ha huh? please now destroying culture Uh, this is an accusation by many people all over across the country and which is why they hate the christians let me tell them about something called you know uh, romane sedis antiste okay yeah <laughs> did i say the antistes romane sedis what is this this is a document by the pope you know this saint robert the nobly okay was here in india in mm-hmm. goa and he used a technique of like you know he used to he is a priest but he never dressed like with that black cassock you know mm-hmm. he used the saffron dress mm-hmm. he wore padukas made a rosary of the this thing small bead no mm-hmm. i forgot rudraksh mm-hmm. okay he made that and and he put tikli put mm-hmm. a turban mm-hmm. and the portuguese like you know they had real problem with him he said oh, what are you doing this is not a christian you are dressing this and that he asked them did christ dress in a particular way mm. and did he tell us to you have to dress in one particular way mm. i am using their culture to communicate with them so what is wrong so the case was sent to the pope so the pope gave this romane sedis antistes which became a foundational document mm-hmm. for inculturation in the second vatican council okay so this is a document on inculturation mm-hmm. that is he said in this document it is clearly said the church is not bound to a certain culture mm-hmm. or a certain language or a certain nationality mm-hmm. the church is larger than that okay so the culture of the place becomes the culture of the church which exists in that place so mm-hmm. if indians are used to wearing that tikli and uh, saffron dress and padukas and mm-hmm. rudraksh this and that mm-hmm. and if that becomes a way of evangelizing them mm-hmm. of course do it So Robert, they normally went on dressing like that, and they couldn't do anything to him. Okay. Now destroying Goan culture, you tell me, who has kept Konkani alive in Goa? Hmm. Are Father Thomas Stephens, Father Dalgaard. Oh yeah. Missionaries. <laughs> yeah. Who wrote the Konkani grammar? Missionaries. Mm-hmm. Catholic missionaries. Mm-hmm. Okay. If uh, if the culture was so destroyed, as I told you, I come from Kumbi family. Hmm. Uh. my i saw my mother my uh, relatives they still dance on that gumtanche dance no okay gumtanche or dance anti bari was no i am saying if the portuguese completely destroyed it how did they know that this is something called gumtanche or dance mm-hmm. that means there's a continuity in that no it preserved in some form at least okay okay it was preserved in some form that is why we know what is gumtanche or dance mm. if the portuguese had destroyed it people would forget about it no How exactly. would they know it is exactly. gumtans or dance, which is our culture? Then that dressing of that kapod, mm-hmm. that red color mm-hmm. kunbi sari. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's a kunbi sari. Okay. Ancestors of Shefali Vaidya never wore kunbi sari because they are not mm-hmm. kunbis; they are Saraswat Brahmins. And all this, uh, whatever we wear for mandos and all, what about that? Mandos were mostly Brahmin dresses. It's an influence of the Chinese uh, type of dresses. If oh, you see the yeah, fan yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the dress they put. Okay, so okay. Chinese and Portuguese and Indian, mm-hmm. Indo-Portuguese and Chinese culture mixed in a sense dress mm-hmm. form mixed, and that powder which they used to put brought from Macau. Okay, mm-hmm. so they did not destroy the culture as such. Now, mand used to happen in Goa. Okay. Mand was there, so ma- they used to gather at one place. So there, in the center was a totem. They used to bury a coconut or something. They used to bury totem. and they would dance there uh, like you know foodi adale zago in jani ki tem takte you know yells and shouts and whatever prayers okay zagor ko so to so all that ani <laughs> i know that i heard from father victor also and many other people sometimes even bad language was used okay. filthy language pervert language was used sometimes when those uh, nataks are going on and this and that mm-hmm. okay now for the, from the eyes of the portuguese they thought it is some kind of again witchcraft black magic because you are bearing something a totem mm-hmm. in a place so they said why you want to do it here mm-hmm. do it in a place where there is a crucifix mm-hmm. 
Mm. Or statue of Mother Mary is there. Do it there. Mm. Why you want to bury somebody's bones and do all that? Okay, 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 okay. Understood, no? So, what they did is replace pagan practices with Christian practices. Mm-hmm. Understood, no? Replace pagan practices with Christian practices. This has also happened in Europe. Mm-hmm. Pagan practices have been replaced with Christian practices. Okay. So there were restrictions put by the Portuguese, but to say that they completely destroyed the culture, I wouldn't agree with. Our okay. culture has been preserved. Catholics are the ones dancing on gum tans or dance. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so now you know in in the video when I just went through the video, you know she was very keen, Shaifali, my dear. She was very keen on having a pope give an apology. to the hindu brethren so i mean it was uh, something very difficult for me to reconcile um but you know what would you have to say about this pope giving an apology i tell you something tyson in the year 2000 mm-hmm. pope john paul the second yeah because that was the millennium year mm-hmm. 2000 years of christ on earth he looked back at the history of the church and okay. he admitted that the church has done lot of mistakes mm. in the past the crusades the dark ages the inquisitions and mm-hmm. so on and so forth scandals and abuses <laughs> mm-hmm. on the side of those who were in power who were in the church from the clergy side everything in the year 2000 he had that year of reconciliation and asking mercy for Mm-hmm. and the video is also available on youtube anybody can watch it he dressed as a penitent crucifix brought up okay and he is asking pardon for the whole world okay. to the whole world for the sins that are committed by the church okay. he specifically mentioned the spanish and the portuguese inquisitions under padre vado then the inquisitions under the propaganda fide he also mentioned uh, galileo's case galileo galilee how he was not given freedom to like you know express his views mm-hmm. and some persecutions on scientists and this and that okay so he has already asked pardon many countries when he visited people demanded that he should ask give an apology he did that in goa he was asked to do he did not do for his great wisdom because we don't know clearly as i said to you when i went to do research on this goa inquisition it didn't seem like a holocaust for me the way it is they are they are putting today mm-hmm. holocaust i don't what do you mean by holocaust in 235 years only 66 to 100 people are executed burning at stake others are just given fine or whatever confiscation which i think like you know punishments under any civil law mm-hmm. even today we have capital punishment even today we confiscate properties if you don't pay a bank loan your house is taken away your car is taken away some sort of punishment is always there mm-hmm. maybe today's punishments are less severe than that compared to those days, those days okay but punishment is punishment there mm-hmm. so he has already apologized the church has already realized that the, the church has been doing mistakes and has made efforts on its own not to repeat those mistakes my question to shefali vaidya to the saraswat brahmins when are you going to apologize mm-hmm. Okay. when are you going to apologize for this dalits who discriminated with mm-hmm. when are you going to apologize for imposing your mentality on others when are you going to apologize for imposing your hindu ideology on the other religions which were there in india mm-hmm. and you know destroying their temples and imposing on them shiva or vishnu or incarnations of these gods and goddesses and destroying their local gods and goddesses they are tribal gods and goddesses mm, 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 mm. the brahmins have done that okay okay forget about what happened years back even during portuguese time just recently some weeks back or uh, around 15 to 20 days back i got in the news in up one dalit boy just passed by a temple he was killed mm-hmm. thinking that the temple is uh, defiled So I want to tell Shafali why they are too much spoiled for you. Look at your own stuff first. What you all are doing? At least the church has realized what wrong it has been doing. On its own, it has already apologized. It has 
made efforts not so that these things don't happen and things are restored and like you know rehabilitation reconciliation happens mm. what are you doing these people even have problem with reservation for st sc and obc people mm-hmm. they have problem with everything mm. in the country today whatever this religious mm. disharmony intolerance is happening who is responsible you think all these 80% of hindus are responsible no they are just 1% or 2% of this so called brahmins mm. the arrogant brahmins i wouldn't say brahmins as such there are quite many good brahmins open minded people mm-hmm. who don't support these things but these arrogant brahmins Mm-mm. they still wanted authority they want to hold on to everything for that matter they are ready to defame and profane and do anything mm-hmm. they are even ready to murder people in name of gods and religion mm-hmm. so i am asking shefali vedya when are you going to apologize because your ancestors did all this discrimination they did human sacrifices they looted people took off their properties brahmins were hand in gloves with the portuguese in goa man mm-hmm. brahmins were the ones who brought the portuguese to goa malupai timoja correct they were the people who brought them mm-hmm. when are you going to apologize when are you going to apologize for bringing portuguese to goa hmm so who bought the portuguese to goa <laughs> and you see who are talking today coming back in circles <laughs> oh god anyways yeah so my last question to you is like you know what do you want to say about the conversions in contemporary times like conversions today the conversion issue yes conversion issue a very hot topic and any time you comment on something on youtube whatever no mm-hmm. if they found out that you are goan they will call you portuguese dukur is it portuguese pig i have yes. been called at portuguese pig many times or rice back convert wow are i come from a family i till today don't have a property of my own not mm-hmm. i as such my family my father does not have a house and a property of his own we mm-hmm. are catholics from goa we are poor yeah there was caste system even in the church so mm-hmm. so powerful were these hindus that the portuguese couldn't end caste system in the church <laughs> it only ended after the yeah. liberation and after second vatican council which happened correspondingly so see if somebody is converting on his own <clears throat> mm-hmm. let's see the scenario in goa many of our hindu brothers and sisters they visit churches they go for prayer meetings yeah okay uh, i was telling you about my village mm-hmm. there is a temple just outside the temple is a cross mm-hmm. now the place where they have a temple was gifted to them by a christian mm-hmm. okay from the village so what these hindus do is they they their jatra happens in the month of january after around 8 days after a week they do litany of that cross the hindus organize that mm-hmm. they will come to us and ask mistri apoya call the mistri the uh, violinist. violinist then you'll come then they will stand there they will bring cake and they will boil grams mm-hmm. how we give for sai bean and all and they will give they do it they will bring candles and uh, garlands of flower they will do they will clean the place Mm-hmm. good friday and holy thursday in my plan i think it is happening in lot of places in goa almost everywhere in goa it happens mm-hmm. the hindus in goa will clean the road because the procession of the crucified christ or the procession of the jesus carrying the cross is going mm-hmm. and they will under go, they will go under the for them it is like you know how they carry the palki of their goddess or god okay, okay. they un- go under it to take ashirwad of that oh, god oh, oh, they do it like you know as a act of humility Wow. Okay. okay. So they will do it when the statue of Jesus is also carried. Okay, okay. So you see, people have that devotion out of their own free will. Who are you to tell them not to do it? Mm. When the person is having certain questions, mm-hmm. okay, he is not getting answer. Mm-hmm. He goes to temples. He goes to. A, if you read to many testimonies, and I have included some testimonies in my research paper mm-hmm. because I wanted to give a good response to this lady. <laughs> mm. fair lady <laughs> so they go on their own mm-hmm. be it pastor dominic or whoever where they go because <coughs> they get answers exactly and if they become convinced that this is the god i want because mm-hmm. he is answering my prayers mm-hmm. others are not answering why will they not embrace it mm-hmm. on their own will true true if there are forced conversions even i will not support forced conversions if there are forced mm-hmm. conversions obviously we have to do something about it mm mm and now i have realized forced conversions are of two types 
one is when you force somebody to accept another religion okay against that person's conscience mm-hmm. the other type is when you force the person to remain in a religion mm-hmm. even when that person doesn't want to remain in it okay, okay. so if a hindu is born in a hindu family he doesn't mm-hmm. want to be a hindu he wants to become a christian you are forcing him to be, remain a hindu mm-hmm. that is not force exactly now if some hindus go to christian prayer meetings the other like bajrang dal rss people he wish were hindu parishad people go with swords and run behind these hindus who are going for christian prayer meetings so are you not forcing them to remain hindu their heart is already christian or muslim mm-hmm. only in form and visibility they are hindus mm-hmm. so are you not forcing them you are also forcing them Mm-hmm. Second thing is, what do you think? Why the church wants to forcefully convert people? What the church wants? <laughs> okay, let's see. The <coughs> church wants to make lot of money because as many uh, visitors in the church, as many members, so every Sunday something will fall in the this thing. Are if the church is so keen about making money, the church can make money through its institutions. For example, let the church church can just legalize abortion. Okay. abortion itself will give you so much money simple church can make money like that so many hospitals the church is running mm-hmm. church can encourage stem cell research through these aborted babies so much money mm-hmm. can come church can encourage uh, homosexual marriages gay parties let's have gay parties we church has lot of venues mm-hmm. can host gay parties lot of mm-hmm. money mm-hmm. it pours in money church can allow contraception lot of money it can in fact establish factories to produce condoms and contraceptive things to and give it to people i'm mm-hmm. sorry i'm feel, using some mm-hmm. filthy language but no. you know to some hard headed people you need to talk like this church can do all this but the church will never do this mm-hmm. the focus of the church is to remain faithful to christ if it is only about making money it can make money through many things mm-hmm. why you only need to convert people and bring it in the fold true okay mm-hmm. so we christians have a mandate matthew chapter 28 20 where jesus has told us to go and proclaim why do we proclaim because we have a christ encounter we have encountered christ you have encountered i have encountered at one point yeah. that is why we are still faithful to him i have had the resurrection ex- experience if anybody asks me did the resurrection really happen in history i will give you rational reasons to prove why it is mm-hmm. but i am asking these people do you even know why you are believing in what you are believing in mm-hmm. do you even know the reasons mm-hmm. simply going and troubling somebody mm-hmm. now today i don't have a person a, a problem if a person doesn't want to accept christ but wants to remain as it is this and that because my thing is it is not for me to drag you mm-hmm. it is the holy spirit who has to work in you mm-hmm. yes okay True. so simply <coughs> like you know and like you know when a uh, american european pakale people when they become hindus these people are very happy <laughs> they become very happy they like you know publicize it such a way mm. so why will i not be happy when somebody is becoming a christian <laughs> exactly see the constitution of india gives us the right to practice preach and propagate one's religion mm-hmm. why did this came the father of the constitution himself converted Mm-hmm. Why don't you go and clarify your problem then? He had problems with Hinduism because Hinduism suppressed him as a person belonging to this SC ST OBC community. Mm-hmm. That is why he converted became a Buddhist. People asking if your uh, Christianity is so good why he did not become Christian? I don't know. According to him he thought that uh, Christianity is a foreign religion. maybe okay. he found his that is part. his times and his whatever knowledge good whatever but I'm saying he converted Mm-hmm. he converted today if you want to honor him you also honor his conversion from true. hinduism to buddhism true you honor his free will to convert okay which he has given mm-hmm. like you know the committee made sure that this provision is put in the constitution so mm-hmm. we honor that also just saying ambedkar jayanti and not respecting this uh, right which is given to people to pre- <coughs> practice preach and propagate their faith okay you really don't honor ambedkar then mm-hmm. secondly is it only islam and christianity which has that propagation of religion thing mm-hmm. when buddhism started did not buddha go on spreading buddhism exactly yeah okay then you know the bhojas the chola 
empire mm-hmm. hindus <coughs> they are saying no india never invaded other countries how hinduism reached vietnam mm and malaysia and all these people they invaded as they invaded the cholas okay they took their religion also mm they may be following some other religion you give them hinduism okay and if hinduism is not having something called propagation of its uh, beliefs mm-hmm. what is iskon mm. hari krishna movement exactly. everywhere they are in europe and america mm. telling people about hari krishna exactly. okay why are you making people like you know come to temples in uh, uh, from us and europe if you are not into conversion tell them don't become hindu you remain as you are you want to marry an indian no you don't have to become hindu tell them why are you wanting them to become hindu and why do you become very happy when they become hindu mm. correct so every religion has it let us respect that mm. let each individual decide for themselves okay. on that no i also wanted to talk about uh, this thing what is hinduism i have already spoken so i'll say it in short note Uh, referring to Ramila Thapar, one great historian in India, and Father Victor Ferrer, it is not one single religion. Mm-hmm. And if today, if tomorrow, no, if these RSS people they ask you, Tyson, today you are Catholic, but your ancestors were Hindu, straight away say no. Mm-hmm. They were not Hindus. The Portuguese never use the word Hindu mm-hmm. to describe the belief system here in Goa. Mm-hmm. They use the word heathen, pagan. Well, Hindu is a twentieth century word, or nineteenth century word. first it was used by the moguls mm-hmm. to refer to the various different religions in india okay then it was adopted by the british also mm-hmm. and when they said like you know <coughs> hindus they said the various different religions of india mm-hmm. so i my ancestors had a different god yours must have had a different god the brahmins had their different god these were different different religions they were fighting with each other the shaivites would fight with vaishnavites and maybe when the moguls came they said are baba we were here before they came so let us come united to to get you makadi mugya diwa to kadita okay okay i give my god to you you give your god to me so they exchange and that is how that syncretism took place mm-hmm. otherwise before the moguls came otherwise you see were there no kings and emperors in india before the moguls came to india mm. before christian kings came to india there were they whom they were. were they fighting with mm. one example i'll give you of the somnath temple it was destroyed by the vaishnavites mm-hmm. they went again and destroyed their temple so they were fighting with each other <laughs> otherwise with whom they were fighting and what they were fighting for in goa most of the old temples which we saw they are mostly temples belonging to shiva or incarnations of shiva or forms of shiva that is because of the kadamba rule or vijayanagara rule because they were shaivites wow so lot of things are there so uh, this is quite some overload of information <laughs> uh, yeah so yeah uh, let's end with that yeah. and yeah thanks a lot for your precious time and yeah please read his article or oh, not an article it's a research paper of how many pages i think around 56 or 58 of, pages of, yeah. of just 56 pages <laughs> just, just 56 pages <laughs> so mm. and uh, did you put your sources of course of course so okay. they will you will find footnotes there in the sources they just I'm, I'm click very, on the i'm very thing. happy that there are sources you know because so, because a lot of y'all will be having questions of uh, where uh, did you get this where you, did you get yeah. the sources right so and you know i'm not a person who will just come and make a claim somewhere you need to be like ex- you know exactly, investigate exactly. about from where you get your information and uh, i i'd be happy even if uh, uh, right now a hindu oh, a muslim or anyone is whoever is watching this um uh, well this was in no way meaning to hurt the sentiment yes of the other religion uh, or trying to claim that ours is the best or somewhere we are clean mm-hmm. but uh, we would like to be you know very objective okay the church does accept some bad things of the past but of course there's always a lot good that comes with it the gospel we never have anything you know wherein we can see christ and you know the effects of christ on the missionaries will never be something bad that's what we believe you know if anyone reads the gospel if if even saint francis xavier was uh inspired to come 
all the way leave his family and come here and he would not see his family for a very long time because there was no means of transport right to go back to see your family i mean which uh, other religion has that you know that burning desire to just leave the place and go yes there will be but at the same time uh, to just make someone who we may have very less info about to make them seem in a bad light may may be very demeaning um, but yes the you know this kinds of matter is always open for debates for discussions uh, you may have some uh, more sources we do not know about we are we are surely ever ready to come and listen to you hear your part and please do mention in the comment sections whatever you feel about it whatever you your heart has and uh, again uh, please don't take anything over here personal but here is just a space for us just to open our minds to just get to know a little bit more things that we must have not heard okay so let's end this session and please subscribe to this channel to get some more videos in the future until then see you and goodbye <laughs>